Yung private sector, I know, I understand some people are really against the private sector. Pero oh. papansin po natin yung universal healthcare. We cannot achieve universal healthcare by solely relying on the government. This is no. a whole of system. Whole of system. That's the reason why malinaw din sa paradigm natin na kasama yung private sector in order for us to be able to achieve universal healthcare. Mm -hmm. Hindi natin pwedeng sabihin, hindi sina natin sila pwedeng iya pera. But we don't have the numbers. We don't have the logistics. That's what you're saying. Not uh, only that. Kasi yung private sector, they, they are necessary partners of the government. Okay. okay. Oh, Susie. Look, when, when, uh, when Secretary Flavier was Secretary of Health, our population is probably 70 million mm -hmm. or 65 million. Mm -hmm. The population has grown so well, much. The number of health workers that we have Halos pareho pa rin. in the public sector has not changed that much. Now, Sabi natin, uunahin natin yung primary health care. Correct. Agree. No problem. However, if you look at the conditions, I'll give you an example of a health center I recently visited. 45,000 people in this municipality. Mm. One doctor in the health center. Two nurses. And yet, two additional from the Department of Health. And yet, here in Metro Manila, the law says if you have, I think, 200 employees or 500 employees, you must have one doctor, doctor oh. on site. Okay, so mm. this is not a place not very far from Metro Manila. Mm -hmm. 45,000, isang doktor eh. Mm -hmm. Ngayon, hindi naman maiakyat, pinag-uusapan ni Congress namin ni Kong to eh. You cannot just increase the number of employees of the local government because they have what's called a person PS cap. Mm -hmm. There's a cap on personal services. They have to balance... Mm -hmm. How many police, how many firemen, how many this, how many that. Mm -hmm. They can't just hire. But mm -hmm. if PhilHealth will pay for certain services, including the very basic maternal and child health counseling, for example, mm -hmm. this is an example, yeah. then the local government can incentivize so that the private sector can do it. Because how can this doctor and the two nurses and the 10 barangay health workers service 45,000 people? Mm -hmm. It's uh, no, it's impossible. It's impossible. Yeah. So well, you need other players run. to come in. Basically, ang solution natin dati, pag ganyan yung mga sitwasyon, nagpapadala tayo ng mga doctor to the barrios. Yeah. But this particular law changes that. Why? Kasi sinasabi natin na kasama yung curative, ay, promotive and preventive parts. So kahit yung mga outpatient, pagbibigay ng yung uh, consultation, cover na po siya, covered po siya under the universal health care. Ang kailangan lang po natin dito would be the guidelines coming from PhilHealth. Mm -hmm. Yun lang po yung inaantay natin because it will take, binamandate din po sila na within two years, they should come up with that guidelines. Yung consultation, for example, in, in, hindi lang ni reimburse dito yung public hospitals, yung public health sector, yung public health sector, okay. kundi kasama yung private. So basically, yung doktor would be the one looking kung saan yung catchment area niya. Kung ako yung isang doktor na nagpa-practice, uh, nakikita ko na 45,000 yung tao dyan. Lahat dyan are may potential patients, mm. quote and quote. Okay. Pwede akong pumunta dyan, lahat sila, pwede yung mga doctors, without even asking them. Ang kailangan mo lang would be guidelines from PhilHealth that those people that seek consultation with them would get reimbursement later. Mm -hmm.